you've learned about amino acids, you've learned about your proteins. In this module, you will now learn about a big group of proteins called enzymes. You know that enzymes catalyze reactions. So when we say catalyze, they make reactions go faster. Before we dive into your enzymes, let me give you a short history of enzymology. So the history of biochemistry or biochemistry actually started with the discovery of enzymes. So enzymology and then biochemistry. Do you know the first enzyme that was discovered? If you answered amylase, you are correct. That time they called it diastase. And these two plant biologists discovered this enzyme in 1833. So they were working on plant extracts. And they discovered that these extracts make insoluble starch soluble. So if you try to place starch in water, you will notice that the solution will become cloudy. It's because starch has very, very low solubility in water. But when they added these plant extracts, they noticed that the solution became clear, meaning starch became soluble. And we now know that it's because of the enzyme acting on starch, breaking it down into its monomers, which are your sugars, and these are soluble in water. Now, the discovery of this and other enzymes later on actually helped debunk a very famous idea that time. It's called vitalism. So vitalism supporters believe that Biochemical reactions only take place inside living cells, and it's because living cells possess this vital force that allows them to undergo these biochemical reactions. Louise Pasteur was actually a proponent of vitalism. It's because while he was studying fermentation of sugar to alcohol, he cannot reproduce the reaction in the absence of living yeast cells. So Louis Pasteur proposed that living yeast cells possess so-called ferments, which are chemical substances that cause biological processes. So these ferments are only found inside living cells. But in 1897, Edward Buchner was able to perform or was able to observe the fermentation of sugar into alcohol without using living yeast cells. So what he used instead are yeast extracts. So he extracted the cytosol of the yeast so you no longer have the living yeast cells. And he was able to observe the reaction. So there was fermentation. And this discovery finally debunked vitalism. And that time, this guy, Frederick Kuhne, coined the term enzyme. So he said these enzyme are the active molecules that are in the yeast extracts of Buchner that allowed or that caused the biochemical reaction, the fermentation of sugar to alcohol. So enzyme means in yeast. Okay. Now, in 1926, another guy, James Sumner, was able to purify and crystallize urease. So it's another enzyme. And uh, when you crystallize a protein, you are able to study its structure. You can tell the position of one atom relative to other atoms within the molecule. So Sumner 
Upon studying the structure of urease, found that it is 100% protein. So he saw the peptide bonds, the side chains of the amino acids, the N-terminal, the C-terminal. So his conclusion is that all enzymes are proteins. That time, it was received with skepticism. But in 1930s, other guys were also able to crystallize other enzymes. Like John Northrop with Moses Kunitz, they were able to crystallize pepsin, trypsin, and other digestive enzymes and saw that they too are proteins. And with this, together with James Sumner and another guy, Wendell Stanley, they were awarded the 1949 Nobel Prize in Chemistry. And 50% uh, of that award uh, is credited to Sumner, 25% for Northrop, and 25% for Stanley. Stanley worked on viruses. Now, during those years, that time, uh, this guy, John Haldane, wrote a treatise entitled Enzymes. So he talked about enzymes. And his most famous um, proposal was that there are weak interactions between your substrate and your enzyme. These weak interactions allow your enzyme to work on your substrate uh, allowing the substrate to undergo the biochemical reaction. This statement of Haldane is the foundation of our understanding of the actions of enzymes. <laughs>